This is David Lloyd, and I'd like to share a video with you chronicling a day at my recent lighting workshop near Woods Canyon Lake, northeast of Payson, Arizona. We began at the lakeside campground in a setting of pine trees and aspens, and a sky filled with a quilt of patchy clouds. While I typically begin my workshops demonstrating how to light a portrait in direct sunlight, I began this class with Plan B, discussing the pros and cons of cloud cover as a natural light source for outdoor portraits. This was followed with a discussion of metering photographic exposure. To set the stage for a cinematic portrait, I selected a group of nearby aspen trees for visual interest, and with the help of my assistant, I set a trio of lights in place whose positions will be seen in the lighting diagrams and pullback photos to follow. For demonstration purposes, we started with the use of available light. However, as it will be seen in the accompanying photos, the downward direction of light from an overcast sky creates dark shadows in the subject's eyes. A quick fix for this is to move the portrait subject under the canopy of a tree thus blocking the direct overhead lighting. This also shifts the light source to the side, allowing the newly formed column of light to sweep across the features of your portrait subject. We were in an open area, and to overcome the drawbacks of the overhead lighting, we added a silver reflector to brighten our model's eyes. The balance is delicate, however, as too much light reflected obscures the soft contours of light desired for a cinematic portrait. To provide greater lighting dimension, we then added backlighting to simulate filtered sunlight behind our subject. As the trio of lights had already been previously set, it was an easy matter to turn on the hair light, which had been fitted with a one-half CTO warming gel. Our cinematic portrait was beginning to take shape. The shallow depth of field from my 135mm portrait lens at f2.8, giving a sense of spatial distance and depth, our model gaining compositional strength from the anchor of the tree, our subject set to the left third with horizontal framing, and the backlighting simulating filtered sunlight adding dimension and visually separating the subject from the background. This combination produces a softly lit and visually compelling cinematic portrait. Having explored ways of augmenting the available light, we were now ready to take full control of the lighting elements and create our own cinematic portrait with portable strobe lighting. As fully diagrammed in the drawings and pullback photos, the main light positioned camera right provided a soft, natural illumination of our model's face, while also adding a beautiful catch light in her eyes. The main light was the Godox AD200X, fitted into a Profoto 2-foot Octobox via a special adapter the second light, fitted with a one-half CTO gel at camera left and behind the tree, illuminates our model's hair and shoulder as if it were mimicking filtered afternoon sunlight. The hair light was a Godox V850 speed light, also fitted to a Profoto light modifier, the 1x3 OCF strip box. The third light at camera position has the role of fill light and gently lifts the shadows that the position of the main light projects onto the contours of the face. Our fill light is also a Godox V850, in this case projecting into a soft white 36-inch Photoflex umbrella with black cover. 
I hope you have enjoyed this short video, and if you would like to experience these lighting workshops for yourself, I would like to invite you to join our meetup group, where we will hopefully see you at the next lighting workshop. And I have also written a book on off-camera flash, which very much augments and supplements and supports the information you've seen in this video. I am providing you with links here not only to my book, but also to my blog, which very greatly enhances the content of this video. Tuning in next time, I look forward to seeing you with our next video.